Well, I had some plans for today, and those plans got changed. Uh, I was originally supposed to be in the city of Verdun today. I was going to be looking at some stuff from the Battle of Verdun, but we ran into some problems, got to the city, uh, and there were literally no hotels open last night at 8.30. They were all closed, uh, nobody working. All of the gas stations were closed. And for some reason, our credit cards wouldn't work in the city. Checked with credit card company, they said everything was fine. It must have been something with the merchant in the area. So we left, unfortunately, and had to come to a different region of France. And uh, once we got out of the city, the cards started working again. But anyway, I won't lie, the part of my soul that loves history has been crushed that we can't go to Verdun. But we're in another city in France that also has a lot of history. Uh, this is the city of Reims. And behind me, I'm at a school. But it's not just any school. This happens to be the place where on May 7th, 1945, the Germans signed the Terms of Surrender, ending World War II. So today, we're gonna to go into the Museum of the Surrender, which is attached to the school, which was a school back in 1945, and uh, go see one of the most overlooked but historically significant spots in France. Okay, so here we are at the entrance of the Museum of the Surrender. Uh, this is also where the 101st Airborne had their headquarters set up prior to heading out to Bastogne, which we saw a few days ago. And in February of 1945, this is where Eisenhower moved the supreme headquarters of the Allied Expeditionary Force. Uh, Reims has a good network of roads and uh, communications, so it made an ideal place. And if you can see here, they have British flag, an American flag, the French flag, and a Soviet flag. So even though the Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore, it did then, and they still fly the flag here. So we're gonna go in and check it out. Okay, so we just entered into the museum and uh, right off the bat they got a big old picture of Eisenhower here and a quote in French that I can't read and also some uh, tank pieces so yeah that's pretty cool uh, we're gonna watch a little movie real quick and then uh, head up and start looking at the Museum of the Surrender So um, just got finished watching a little short film that they have about the museum here at, uh, at Reims. Um, pretty interesting. So now I just went upstairs and uh, they got all kinds of different artifacts. We'll take a quick look at some of what they have up here and then I, I really want to see the room where the uh, terms of surrender were signed. Well, uh, you can't have a World War II museum without an M1 Garand. Now, they've also got a display here for the French resistance. You'll notice that they've also got a British RAF pilot here. So the RAF had a special squadron where they dropped off and picked up secret agents. So, so they helped with the resistance. But uh, yeah, very interesting. So this is something that you don't typically see in an American museum. Uh, this is equipment for an air raid warden in the city of Reims in the St. Maurice district. So he's got a whistle and his hat and patch and yeah, interesting. They've also included some German stuff in here. So this is a Luftwaffe pilot's uniform. Nice. 
and here we have a 101st Airborne Infantry Trooper all kitted out golly that would have been a bunch of stuff to jump with and this is different something that you don't typically see uh, this is depicting oh what the Shafe staff would have looked like so Shafe standing for Supreme Headquarters of the Allied Expeditionary Force and you can see the patch for anybody that was in the European Theater of Operations right there oh look at there that's kind of a nice little touch included some Lucky Strike cigarettes in there it was a very popular brand at the time layers yeah this is kind of nice so they have a couple of patches for the 5th Infantry Division and the 7th Armor Division. These are the two divisions that liberated Reims. And if you've watched any of the video interviews that I've done with Reed Stevens, his brother was also in the 7th Armor Division and uh, was actually killed right here outside of Reims. That's uh, kind of neat that they included that. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, here they have a painting showing the signing of the Terms of Surrender on May 7th. And they also have a few other little items here, like this commemorative medallion. Uh, and then this is a set of keys to the war room. And then, I don't know, somebody made this, I guess, a little souvenir ashtray. Uh, showing the capitulation in Reims. Okay, we just made our way through the museum portion of this complex, and now we are entering the war room where the terms of surrender of World War II were signed, also where Eisenhower had his headquarters set up. How cool is that? Holy smokes, this is so incredibly cool. So this is where Eisenhower and the staff of the Allied Expeditionary Force commanded the Battle of Europe. So cool. And then on May 7th, 1945, at a little bit after two in the morning, it all ended right here. Terms of surrender were signed by Eisenhower's chief of staff, uh, Beetle Smith, which if you look, his chair is right there. And then opposite him was the chief of staff for the uh, German army for Admiral Dönitz, who had taken over after Hitler committed suicide. And his seat was right here. So General Alfred Yodel. And then of course the other staff were sitting along here. So there were three Germans that, that represented the, uh, the German army and they all sat right here. And then afterwards uh, Eisenhower came in and recorded a video message announcing the end of the war. Gosh, how cool. 
In January 1943, the late President Roosevelt and Premier Churchill met in Casablanca. There they pronounced the formula of unconditional surrender for the Axis powers. In Europe, that formula has now been fulfilled. The Allied force, which invaded Europe on June 6, 1944, has, with its great Russian allies and forces advancing from the south, utterly defeated the Germans by land, sea, and air. This unconditional surrender has been achieved by teamwork. Teamwork not only among all the allies participating, but among all the services, land, sea, and air. To every subordinate that has been in this command of almost five million allies, I owe debt of gratitude that can never be repaid. The only repayment that can be made to them is the deep appreciation and lasting gratitude of all free citizens of all the United Nations. Now, this is kind of funny. This is an article by a guy named Edward Kennedy. After the surrender, which was signed on May 7th, they weren't supposed to announce it until like a day or two later, but this guy heard Dernitz announce the end of the war over the radio, so he broke the story. And then uh, a lot of the leadership of the Allied forces had to kind of play catch up and then announce the end of the war. And they have that paper right here. Kind of cool. Well, that was, that was really kind of cool. Now, normally, a person would go by and just think that this was some ordinary brick building, but whenever you know the history behind it, that gives it some added weight and significance. So, that was the uh, Museum of the Surrender. Very historically important place, and uh, I'm glad that I was able to visit. All right, but we're off to the next place. Oh, crud. I think these two ladies are writing tickets and they are heading for my car. So this video is coming to a quick end.